Today I want to talk about how to build a social circle from scratch no matter wherever you are. Whether you are in a new country, whether you are in a new city, whether you are in the city that you always have stayed but you don't have a social circle, today we're going to dive deep into that. Before I even start, I want to share my personal journey with this. So when I started building social circle, it was back in Singapore. You know, I moved to Singapore when I was 17, and at that time I didn't have a lot of friends. Now the first thing, you know, in India I had just four friends. So over there, it was very hard for me to connect with people because they're people from different nationalities, right? And my roommate, I didn't even know his name for the first six months. He was a Chinese guy. He didn't speak much English. All we used to talk about was light on, light off. That's all we used to talk about. And I didn't have any friends for the first, I think, four or five months. And my time over there was fucking horrible. You know, I used to, I, I remember I, used to, I wanted to come back so bad. I was like, I don't want to stay here. This is like hell, you know, like I don't have a social circle. I don't, I don't have people I can talk to, no friends. All I have is just light on and light off, right? That's, that's all I had at that time. And that's when I learned about cold approach pickup. Now, I want to share some of the important things that I've learned over the years, you know, building social circles in Singapore, Middle East, in Europe, and now having friends from all around the world. And I want to share it with you so you can also make it happen for yourself. So I'm going to give you a couple of pointers. Now, these pointers will help you save some time and not repeat the mistakes that I did, you know, building social circles from scratch. Now, the first thing you have to understand is whether if you're in a new country, the first thing is to understand the culture over there, the cultural calibration. And it's really important because when I moved to Singapore, I did I could not understand the culture. You know, initially I was like, okay, people are in their own lives over there. People don't care much about other people. And even friendship is not like how friendship is in India, right? In India, you're friends with someone, you know everything about him, you know, you know, his whole family, you know, his friends, right? You're just spending so much time with each other, you know everything about each other. But in Singapore, it was completely different. People were more into their own life, you know, more focused on their own work. And uh, yeah, even if you're friends with someone and he doesn't want to share something personal, it's all right, you know, you have to accept it as it is. And in India, we are completely trained in a, you know, in a different pattern altogether. So coming from that kind of a mentality, going to Singapore and seeing, you know, a different kind of side, was completely new to me and that's what you have to do man if you're in a new country understand the culture over there all right understand how the social behavior of friends or how people treat each other because you might be trained in a different way and that's one thing i realized why it was really hard for me to connect with people of different nationalities because the indian social you know conditioning or the indian social scene is very different all right so that's the first thing you have to understand the culture so that you can calibrate yourself according to the culture Alright, you can calibrate according to the culture. It's called cultural calibration. And guys, all you need to do is make a bunch of friends, see how friends behave with each other. You don't have to do a fucking research paper on this. And all you need to do is, you know, get adjusted to that kind of a behavior if you're from a different country. Now, if you're not in a different country, you don't really need to culturally calibrate. Maybe in a different city, across different cities as well, you might have to culturally calibrate a little bit, but not too much. Now, the second thing is, which would have saved me a lot of time, was have a fucking plan. Have a strategic plan on how you're going to build that social circle because if you think, okay, you know, friends are just going to come up, people are just going to come up and talk to me, that's not going to happen, man. That's Nothing is that easy. You need to get out there, you need to meet people and you need to interact with several different people and then you'll find, you know, the peers, the friends that you'll want to hang out with, people with the same sort of mindset, right? So you need to really put yourself out there. Now, what I did in Singapore was I was thinking, hey man, uh, what options do I have? My college, I have my flatmates, my roommate, definitely. And apart from that, I also joined some different activities. I was, you know, going for English classes. I was going for some dance classes, some different activities where I get to interact with people. So write it down, all right? Write down the places which you have access to. For example, maybe it's your university, maybe it's your office, maybe it's, and I'm talking about social networking, guys. I'm not talking about game. So maybe it's your office, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's some extracurricular activity that you do. So write it down. And if you don't do any activities, guys, add that in, because that is one of the, like dance. Guys, if you learn dance, you'll see a lot of girls going there, less guys and all the guys over there are simps, most of them. Right, so it's very easy to pick up girls as well if you join the, all these activities. And it's not about picking up, it's about social networking, right? You're building a network so that girls get you more girls. And apart from that, also you get more business, your personal life is you know going good. So join different activities and interact with people over there. Don't think that people are gonna come up and talk to you. They might sometimes. So you have to get out there, you have to talk to people and you have to make connections. You have to understand that no one's gonna come up to you. 
All right, might happen once in a while, but you can't wait for that shit to happen. You need to connect with high-value individuals. Which brings me to my third point: focus on quality over quantity. Guys, now I want you to understand this point, and I want you to ingrain it deep in your mind because I did this mistake. All right, I just the first friends I could find in Singapore. I was with them, and those were not really the kind of guys I would want to hang out with anymore. Or even the wavelength didn't match. But I thought, okay, this is easy. You know, they're my friends now. I can hang out with them, and that was not the best route, guys. I would have landed in so much trouble in Singapore if I would have hung out with them for two, three, four years. I was there. So understand, if you're gonna meet different people with these people, all right, they're gonna be your representatives. Like if you're going to a club, if you're going to a bar, if you're going, if you're interacting with different people, these people are gonna hang out with you. So it's very important you have to focus on quality over quantity. It doesn't matter if you know everyone. What matters is that you know a few select people who everyone knows. All right, these are high-value individuals. You know who you would want to network with. All right, not everyone. You know you should not hang out with everyone because that reduces your value. And apart from that, I've seen you know so many incidents of uh, people doing uh, bad shit when they're out, like you know getting into fights, arguments, shouting, rowdy behavior. I've seen that way too much, and it's very important that you stay away from it. It's very important you stay away from it because if you want to get good at this. You don't have time for fucking drama, man. You don't have time for drama, and you don't want that negativity in your life. So focus on quality over quantity. Now, which brings me to the next point: focus on cold approach pickup and focus on day, night, or online dating. Now, guys, understand it depends completely on your lifestyle. What is your lifestyle like? You know, what is more comfortable and convenient for you? What time do you have, right? If you don't have much time, focus on online dating. If you have time, cold approach is the way to go because you have so many crazy experiences. It builds you up as a person. So focus on day game, night game, and online dating. So one thing I see, one big mistake I see in a lot of pickup guys' game is either you know they'll talk to the girl, right? Either shit happens, either she's attracted or she's not attracted. If she's not attracted, they'll cut her out. If she's attracted, maybe they'll get laid once and then they'll cut her out, or maybe you know they go in a relationship. Now you have to understand there's a third way as well, which is if the things don't work out between you, just be like, hey. It's all right. Things didn't work out between us, but I can be a good wingman. I can introduce you to some of my friends. Don't say it outrightly because the girl would not want to seem like a slut in front of you. But you know, just become good friends with her. How hard it is to become good friends if you're approaching girls with the intent of attraction. Why can't you approach girls with the intent of friendship? And guys, girls will always get you more girls. Girls love matchmaking. Most of my friends, you know, if, if you're a single guy, if you have a lot of girlfriends, you will understand this. That girls would love to introduce you to their friends. They would love to take you out, introduce you to their friends. And it's always better to hit the Club with a bunch of girls rather than with a bunch of wings. All right, and I see this pickup thing, right? And I think one great coach said, uh, like, pickup is like a cock fest to success. It doesn't have to be that way. All right, it doesn't have to be a cock fest to success where you're going with a bunch of guys to the bar, bunch of guys to the day game environment, and you're like, okay, now I'm doing some pickup shit, but I'm surrounded with guys. That shouldn't be the case, guys. That should not be the case at all. You'll find good big women who will help you out, getting more girls. And also, which brings me to my next point, everyone loves women. All men love women, most of them, right? So you can use the woman you meet in cold approach pickup as currency, and you can use them to interact with these high net worth individuals, high value individuals who you want to network with, right? And it's a very good thing to do because you will make so many networking connections just by you know befriending a girl and just you know taking her out. And it's not like you're using her. Guys, sorry, I, I think I used the wrong word, but it's not like you're using her. You're also giving her an amazing experience. You are a non-judgmental guy who's introducing her to her friends. How many people do that? People are just very scared in the field. Hey, don't talk to my girl. Hey, no, I want to keep my girl separate. But you're a cool guy who's just going out there, getting laid, making friends. You know, introducing friends, introducing people, making more connections. Guys, understand there is no room for jealousy in this if you really want to get good at this. Which brings me to my last point: have social circle meetups every week. Every week, one day you plan a social circle meetup. You write down the people you want to network with, where they are. You know how will you network with them? That's your plan, right? And you invite them to this social circle meetup. And always, guys, when I have these meetups, it's two, three guys and a bunch of girls. Because that's always the best scene. You don't want to invite everyone. You don't want to seem needy. That okay, you know, this guy is just inviting, you know, every Tom, Dick, and Harry. You you can't do that, all right. If you're inviting high-value individuals, they would not want to be seen around with so many bunch of people, right? So you have to make sure that there are more girls. The ratio is more girls and less guys. And guys, this will help you build the social circle that you want and that you desire. So go out there, test it, and let me know in the comment section what you think about it.